obviously the, you see the importance of the United Nations Parliamentary uh, Assembly. Um, how would they actually help the United Nations function um, if they had one compared to how they function today through the, you know, the Security Council and having the, just the five permanent members uh, yeah. with veto powers, etc. We seem to be holding all the cars, so to speak. Um, so why do you think it is needed then? And how, how, would, how would you implement it in the United Nations? How would it help? I think the answer is that we need to realize how the system currently works. And then we have to see yeah, what a parliamentary assembly, how it, distinguishes, how it is distinguished from that. Because at the moment, important decisions are being taken by um, the representatives of the governments exclusively. And this means that a large part of the world population is automatically excluded from any decision making and um, from deliberations at the UN and the UN system and, and the organizations of the UN system. So this means that important topics don't actually reach these de deliberations. They are not discussed, they cannot be brought up. And the representatives of nation states, the bureaucrats, or let's put it more politely, the ambassadors and um, plenty for attentionaries at the conferences, they, their um, task is to represent what governments believe is in the national interest. But this national interest is only defined by the executive of a country. So the executive actually um, defines this interest and it might not actually be, you know, what is in the interest of humanity as a whole. So what happens in UN, in the UN bodies and in international conferences, governmental conferences, is that uh, more or less the lowest common denominator of national interests is sought in order to come to regulations. And this is not sufficient, you know. Mm -hmm. So the difference a UN parliamentary assembly would make in a nutshell is that it would bring the voice of the people into global decision making by contrast to the voice of national interests only. I, I understand. And you're talking about, you're talking about civilian participation or you're talking about the uh, non-governmental uh, organizations. Um, what kind of participations would you get from the, not so much from the nations, but from the people on the global scale? How would that, how do you implement that? Yes, I mean, the most important principle of democracy, I believe, is that um, people elect their representatives freely and fairly. And, and this is not happening at the global level, obviously, as democratic participation stops at national borders. I mean, there is only one um, example which... Uh, is different, namely the European Union and the European Parliament. But in almost all other world regions, people are only represented by their governments. And bureaucrats sitting on UN bodies, they are not elected by the citizens. They are appointed by the government. And what we need is that citizens in elections, that would be the um, long-term goal, actually elect democratically elect their representatives who will then take part in decision making in, in the United Nations and other relevant intergovernmental organizations like the World Trade Organization and the international financial institutions. And um, so the idea of the UN Parliamentary Assembly addresses this, um, not, not so much the involvement of uh, non-governmental organizations. And uh, you, you are going to put this proposal, um, as you mentioned before, to the G20. Um, have you put this proposal to the General Assembly? The proposal will be presented actually to all the governments who are represented in the United Nations. Okay. It's not only the G20. And in fact, uh, the states participating in the G20 summits they might not be the ones who will take the lead in this initiative at the UN. Um, I believe that rather some middle powers and smaller states uh, will bring it up 
in the midterm as they are the ones who might um, benefit most of changing the UN's governance structure. So we presented to all, we will present it to all the governments um, at the UN. And in fact, it might be possible that today uh, the declaration of Buenos Aires will be handed over to Secretary General Ban Ki-moon uh, in Strasbourg, where he is at the European Parliament today. I think you also addressed a technical question. How, sh how would it be uh, introduced at the UN General Assembly? And this can only happen through a government as the UN General Assembly is a, gov a body composed of um, the member states of the UN only, yes. what is needed is that a group of like-minded governments introduces the subject in the UN General Assembly. And this is exactly the goal we as a campaign do have, namely to convince governments that it's in their own best interest to make international institutions more democratic, transparent and accountable to the world's citizens.